Hi, yes, it's solar roadways time again. Sorry, I've got to do it. I know I've already done half a dozen videos busting solar roadways and showing what a gobsmackingly face palm worthy, stupid idea it is to put solar panels on a road that you actually drive on. And not only have I done whiteboard videos going through the engineering calculations to prove, demonstrably prove, that it's just not in any way really practical, but I've also taken uh, real test results from solar roadways installations and analyzed those before. So I'll link those in down below and at the end of the video if you want to check it out. Now the one we're going to take a look at today, because many people have asked for this, and it's only fair that we actually take a look at the test results from the world's biggest solar roadway installation. So let's take a look at it. It's the Colas Wattway project, which to be fair is by far the best and most professional by an order of magnitude solution to implement solar roadways. It's actually you know, probably as good as you can get from an engineering point of view. The ridiculous brochures, solar freaking roadways is just an absolute joke. The one in uh, the Netherlands was it the solar uh, pathway that's just uses like concrete uh, big installation. It's not very cost effective. This one, Colas are a huge uh, road building infrastructure company, so they know what they're doing. They're little, very thin uh, polymer covered solar cells that you can basically just stick on to the existing road surface as they claim. And it, it's not a bad solution. So they actually installed one more than a year ago now. So I thought we'd actually take a look at the test results as it happens over. I've got test results for the last 11 months. Rather than just calculations, we can analyze the real test results, compare it with a nearby uh, solar installation and see how good it is. I won't need more than the one whiteboard here to do it. Let's go. Now, in my previous whiteboard analysis of the uh, Colas Wattway project, I came to the conclusion effectively, at absolute best, and I was being very generous, half the output for three times the cost. And we'll get to the conclusion, looking at almost a year's worth of data, and see if I was on the money or not. So late last year in 2016, there was a huge dog and pony show. The French minister for Silly Walks was there at the installation of this thing, and telling the world how wonderful it is and how France is going to be a leader in solar technology, blah, blah, freaking blah. Anyway, it's a pretty big installation. It's like one kilometre long. It's uh, 336 kilowatts, which is huge. Uh, it uses, uh, what is it, 2,800 panels, which are uh, basically 120 watts each, assuming that it's a nominal solar irradiance of 1,000 watts per square metre regular uh, test conditions. It's a uh, $5 million installation cost. Cole S. Wattway have uh, said that uh, it costs about six euros per watt uh, module manufacturing uh, cost. Divide five million euros by 336 uh, kilowatts uh, installation size, it's 14.88 euros per watt. Is that reasonable? Well, let's go over here to a commercial solar farm Wah, right off the bat. We're screwed. Commercial solar farms are about $1.57 euro per watt installed. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. So just of academic interest, uh, the module cost is actually 40% of the cost of the installation here, which is actually quite large compared to a commercial installation, which is uh, typically might be in the order of say 15% uh, of the installed system costs. So road installation and other infrastructure and everything else, inverters, wiring, the whole kit and caboodle, you know, duct cable ductings and all the rest of it, uh, 888 euros. So that works out to about 60% of the cost. So they do have some scope here, as I mentioned in my previous video, to actually lower the cost. The installation costs might come down if they ever get it to actually stick on an existing surface, but I don't think they will because you've got to have the cable in running under there. You've got to basically dig up at least a whole uh, bitumen uh, tarmac layer of the road at least so that you can sink them down in and then have the cable ducts and whatnot actually coming out of the thing. So it's not a, as simple matter as they claim of just sticking them down. That makes for great marketing. Yeah, marketing, <laughs> bullshit. Anyway, as I mentioned in the previous video, Colas have said 
that their sort of best case pie in the sky figure is going to be three euros per watt. That's module cost. So they might be able to lower the cost by half, but it's never ever going to get close to a commercial solar farm, which is like, like basically half Coalesce's best case estimate installed. And they're still talking about the module, just the module cost at three euros per watt. It, it has absolutely no chance of catching up to commercial solar technology. And this is the thing that a lot of the solar roadways fanboys keep wanting to talk up. Oh, but you know, as the technology gets better and better, the cost is gonna go down and down and down. Yeah, well, so is the cost of commercial solar farms. They have been since day dot. And basically, if it's already twice the size up here, if they, even if they follow a linear trajectory down, it's still gonna be twice the cost in the future just for the module, let alone installed and everything. It's gonna be multiple times the cost of commercial solar farms. It'll never ever get down to the same cost, not even close. But I know what you're saying, Dave, show us the data. Can we actually see the test results from this thing? Yes, we can. I'll link it in down below. There's actually a French uh, website which actually has like thousands of these um, solar farm installations and people's houses and things like that. You can just upload your data. It's like pvoutput.org. I've got my own uh, home solar power system. I'll link in videos and I'll link in my one down below as well. Anyway, there's a French website that has the exact data for this uh, Colas Watway Road. And basically it goes back to last December, but the December figure was a bit funny. So I'm only gonna actually track the data from January through to November, because as I film this, uh, we haven't finished December yet. So we got 11 months worth of data and we can see nearby solar installations as well. Now, I couldn't really find one that matches the size of this, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna adjust for that as you'll uh, see. So I found this one called uh, Solar uh, Ure or whatever it is. Um, and this is a 27 kilowatt uh, system. So it's a reasonable size. And here's a photo of it on top of, uh, what is it, a house or a farm or whatever. And it's 30 kilometers away from the Colas Wattway one. So good enough over the span of the year to have very similar weather, only 30 kilometers apart. And uh, it's got 120 panels. Uh, I'll link in the data sheet down below for those playing along at home. And it was actually built in 2010 and it doesn't actually use particularly good solar panels. They're quite old and they're only 135 watts uh, per square meter nominal output. If you compare that up here to the Colas Wattway one, which is the best modern technology they, they can get, I'm sure, which is only 114 watts per square meter, you can already see just compared to your average, you know, home based uh, solar panels, they're not very good and old ones at that. Um, if you want to go up to, not even commercial ones, but home ones now are approaching uh, like sun power ones, I'll have to link in those down below, uh, 200 watts per square meter. So already, like the Colas Wattway one is way behind. It's not because of the cells they're using, it's because of the extra toughening resins and other, and the rough surface and everything else they have to put on top to make it usable as a roadway. So you're just gonna get lost in that. There's no way about it. You know, it's not like you can use low iron uh, glass with excellent transmissive properties and everything else like you can in regular uh, solar panels that aren't driven on by bloody cars. So yeah, you're gonna have to take a hit there already. So what I've done is actually got a spreadsheet of the uh, test results from January through to November or the out production output uh, results for these two systems, even though they are uh, greatly by an order of magnitude different uh, uh, in size here, it doesn't matter. I'm accounting for that in the spreadsheet. So it's basically the production output divided by the nominal uh, system size. Oh, so that's a nominal output per unit size, so to speak. And here's the graph for it, comparing the two. Now it might look a bit funny. Let me try and uh, explain a bit. You don't have to understand the red curve is the one we really want to look at in the end. But the blue and the green one here, the green one on top is the uh, Solur one, um, the home base one, and the blue one below it is the Colas Wattway one. And you can see that it's basically a much lower output per 
unit size. So it can go anywhere from like, uh, you know, just like half of the output of the uh, home installation one to, I don't know, like a quarter or a fifth or something like that. And remember that they're only 30 kilometers apart. So over the span of that uh, 11 months, the weather should be roughly similar between the two. The solar uh, irradiation between the two should be very uh, similar and everything else. So it's, it's a pretty good adjusted for uh, system size, apple to apples comparison. And the Cole S Wattway one is pretty terrible. But the interesting part of this graph is actually the one on the right hand Y axis, which is actually the efficiency compared between the two. And you can see it ranges anywhere from about 150% to over 500% more efficient, depending upon the month. That's like five times. Uh, like, what do you say to that? And you've got to remember, this is compared to just a pretty average residential rooftop installation, just at some fixed angle. You know, it's probably not optimum angle, it's just some uh, thing, let alone a, a proper uh, tracked commercial installation that would use better quality and more efficient uh, panels. It, it's just, it's going to be much worse. This is just a real basic comparison. It's still not even close. So what's causing that? Well, of course, the flatness of the thing in the worst uh, possible uh, month right at the end of the year when it's, you know, basically the output's dropping to bugger all. That could be maybe some extra grime on there. I don't know. You know, that's going to have some factor in, but I think it's just because it's really flat at that horrible angle. Some of it's like shaded. It's not that terrific. I see some trees there in the photos and stuff like that. But this is a realistic installation of a solar roadway. So, you know, you can't argue that's not a fair comparison. In fact, if you actually take out the figures for the 11 months, on average, it's 288% more efficient for a not very highly specced home-based uh, <laughs> solar installation. So, what, 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 call us what way. So that's a pretty big fail right there. That's just on average. These are the real measured test results over 11 months. So there you go, it's actually not that surprising. As I've done in previous videos, you can do these calculations yourself. It's not rocket science, back of the envelope calculations. And just common sense tells you when you put the solar panels flat instead of tilted, and then you have to have the rough surface on there. So you've got the transmissive loss we saw here or 114 to 200 watts for a, you know, a modern panel like that. You know, it's almost uh, half the efficiency of a modern panel just due to those losses. And then you drive cars on them. So not only is shaded some of the time, although this road's in the middle of nowhere, there's like 2,000 cars a day, which isn't, I don't think, it's not really a lot of uh, traffic. So not a huge demand. But the tyres, the rubber, all the dirt and grime and crap and rocks and sand and all sorts of crap that gets on that uh, surface and embeds itself in is just going to let less and less light in. So it'd be interesting to actually see the results of this over several years, but 11 months, it looks, you know, reasonable. You can see the graph there. They kind of sort of track generally. So it's not like it's, it's you know, like a couple of weeks after cars started driving on it just drastically dropped or anything. But, you know, it's, it's doing all right, but you're still getting that huge amount of loss, 288%. So it's like a third the efficiency of just a pretty average home installation, let alone a commercial one. No contest. And on top of that, if you actually uh, look at the National Renewable Energy Lab, they've got really cool reports and everything. This is a US government uh, thing, which I've used in uh, previous videos. If you actually run the numbers on a real installation at this location in Tarouf, that's how you pronounce it, in uh, France for a 336 kilowatt system, when you actually lay them flat, it's 288 uh, kilowatt hours per year. That's, you know, real sort of estimated data based on the solar irradiation at that particular location over the whole year. They've got data on this sort of uh, stuff. But if you have a commercial solar farm, uh, you get 345 kilowatt hours per year compared to 285. So it's basically 20%. 2% more efficient based on all everything else being the same system loss as everything else because you've got the solar panels which track the, you know, track the sun, at least a one axis tracking like that. That's what I've got here. And then it gets even worse, as we said, when you're factoring the 114 watts per square meter compared to, you know, a real modern commercial uh, module at 200 watts per square meter at 75% more per square meter. So, you know, like we're talking 
probably double the output here just because it's tracking and because it's uh, you know it hasn't it's not being used as a bloody road surface and has all those transmissive losses in it it's like double why would you do this for an already marginal payback technology so there's actually a fair bit of debate out there about uh, you know the payback of solar systems, be they commercial solar farms or home uh, solar installations like that. It, it can, if you get down into the nitty gritty detail, it can get quite difficult to actually work out exact numbers based on in cost and environmental payback and manufacturing cost and lifespan and all the rest of it. It's really, you know, quite difficult, but an already marginal technology and you want to try and save the planet by getting half the output right off the bat, let alone all the long term uh, problems with maintenance and everything else, which I'm not even going to factor into this because a, a commercial solar farm, what's there to go wrong? Not much, right? But when you've got a road, it's like, oh, yeah. So in the previous video, I came to the uh, conclusion that at best it was uh, half the output for three times the cost. What is it here? Roughly one third the capacity. I mean, it's going to be even worse than that, as I said, compared to a commercial solar farm. So I'm being very generous here for nine times the installation cost. And as I said, the installation cost might come down. I think in the previous video, I might said it might come down to six times the cost or something like that. But it, why? A third the capacity for nine times the cost based on real measured data. There is no way to spin this thing that this is a good idea. You just can't argue with demonstrably true measured data. It's just ridiculous. And as I said, the fanboys, oh yeah, the cost will go down. It'll never ever be anywhere close to a commercial solar system. It won't even come close to a, a, a cheap ass one hung low brand uh, consumer rooftop solar system. Not even, not a hope in hell of doing it let alone all the problems and all the infrastructure of putting this under a road. As I said, your cabling installation, your losses aren't are going to be more. And then you've got the, the drainage and all sorts of things. You've got wear and tear of the road surfaces. How do you repair these things easily? Like, just why would anyone think this is a good idea? I don't know. So look, oh, granted, Coles Watway actually did a good job engineering wise actually developing the right solution for a solar road if that's what you actually want compared to the two other main solutions out there with one of which is <laughs> the solar freaking roadways is just a, a an absolute joke um, it's just hobby level stuff really Engin they've done the best they can engineering wise and i actually think it's quite good but it's just not practical there's just no way you could implement this on a mass scale. It would be, as I said in the previous video, an ecological disaster if you did so. It's a very, very poor choice and any politician who recommends a solar road based on this sort of data at a third the capacity for nine times the cost, not even factoring in maintenance and everything else, should be sacked, really. It is just a joke. So that's it. France has done their dash, Solar Roadways has done its dash, it, like three different ones in progressive orders of stupidness, up to one that is the best engineering stupid solution possible, and it's still utterly, utterly busted. But hey, I'll be fair, there might be some niche, you know, use for this thing in some location, something like that, but just as an idea to save the planet, to pave all the roads. What do they want? A thousand kilometers of this crap in France? They're already the laughing stock. They want to put a thousand kilometers in? Oh, unbelievable. This is the world's best solar roadway installation. The biggest, it's a kilometer long, and it's not even in the ballpark of being practical. I'm done. Solar roadways, Busted. So can we please not have to do this again? I'm just done. What's this, my seventh video on solar roadways and some people just still want to believe in it. Don't, it doesn't work. It's not practical. Get over it. Catch you next time.